So the uh, this uh, job, the customer provided a stock that was already bedded and used for an older Remington 700, a true Remington 700 uh, action with the pretty much the same barrel on it, M24 Heartland. Um, the problem, and it's not really a problem, but what we got to do next is actually modify the stock to fit this new action. The biggest difference being the recoil lug here. Uh, earlier in the video, we, I believe I, I know I measured this. It's, I think it's two or one quarter inch thick. And the stock has inletting or the bedding was bedded around the original Remington 700 standard recoil lug, which is 0.187 or 188, uh, which is uh, 3 sixteenths. So this is one quarter inch and the old one was 3 sixteenths. So obviously this is not going to fit until we cut out uh, some or most of the bedding. So what we're gonna do is basically just cut out as much of that original bedding as possible and uh, then just re-bed this as, as you would normally. So right here's what I'm talking about. This uh, That's where the recoil lug is gonna sit. And this has been bedded for the 3 16 inch standard Remington 700 uh, recoil lug. So what I'm gonna do is take our end mill here, quarter inch end mill, feed down. I'm gonna not cut this surface here, the, the uh, front facing, where the recoil lug Bears against, I'm not going to touch. I may put a few relief cuts in there just for the new bedding to kind of have a place to go <clears throat> and stuff. But on the bottom as well, I'm going to cut out some of that. And then probably go around and just do the entire, all this stuff. Just cut it, cut it out a little bit to make room for the new stuff. Back here too. So you can see... That's that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, we've got all the bedding, the original bedding removed, uh, or at least cut out enough to give this new barreled action a place to live its new life and be happy. Um, so yeah, you can see the original relief cuts and things. Now the recoil lug area is well opened up all the way back down to the rear rear tang screw that also has been just basically just cut cut down a little bit you can see the pillars down in there and up here up front all right so next we're going to test fit everything i have taken off the side bolt release because i have a sneaky suspicion that's going to be affecting <clears throat> it's going to be hitting that stock. There's no cutout for it. So it drops right in, and it's sitting flat, 
meaning there's no uh, detectable rocking uh, back and forth, which would indicate that the front is a little bit higher than the back or something like that. Now, if I take the barrel, it'll wiggle, but that's everything ahead of this. So that's pivoting here. So that's normal. That would be expected. So I believe I've cut everything out that needs to be cut out. And then, yes, sure enough, down here, the bolt release, the bolt release right here is going to, the stock's going to have to be cut to allow that to function properly. Before I get too deep into the finishing work of this entire thing, I want to test fire this chamber. I haven't done that yet. Looks perfect. You got no significant rings or marks or dents or gouges or grooves or anything weird. Uh, I'm going to measure the case just to make sure, compare it to what it should be, make sure there's no feature on there that's too big or long. But visually, that looks really good. <clears throat> so we go ahead and bed this guy. Bedding's all cleaned up and ready for curing. So we'll set this aside uh, inside the house, uh, close to the fireplace. Not close, but you know, keep it warm. Uh, bedding, acro glass at least, does not like to be cold as it cures. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll let this cure overnight. Twenty-four hours. Come back and uh, clean up the inside, all the excess that may have uh, spilled out. All right. Yeah, that looks great. That looks pretty much perfect. No voids. Very nice one-to-one -one bed. Nice little cozy bed for the Deflans Deviant to sleep in. No, but seriously, this will keep everything uh, consistent shot to shot because there's nowhere for the action to move. 
You know, we do mask the uh, front and and uh, sides and the par anything any parallel surfaces, but everything else is is uh, one to one. Uh, especially up here, that just allows the stock to come out a little easier. Really, all that matters is that surface, the rearward surface, where the recoil lug absorbs all the forces from detonation of cartridge, all the recoil. Hence the name. So anyway, uh, we're going to come in here with the end mill again and just clean up things like this, you know, the little overspray or spray, the over spill, spillage, spill out. You know, just cut this back to where it used to be, where you saw previously. But uh, we still got a nice little pad under the shank of the barrel. Uh, not quite as far out as it was before. That was a little bit overkill anyway. Uh, the super important stuff is all here on back. And that all looks just perfect. So this barreled action is now ready for engraving. We always engrave the cartridge information. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be 6.5 slash 284 Norma. Good old Norma. And then on the other side, we'll put our logo because ATF requires our maker's mark on that. So logo will be on this side. And then I like to put the twist rate. And I'll check with old Ken, see if he wants anything else special on there. So guys always ask me about betting. And um, it's one of those things that can't hurt to do. Certainly can't hurt anything. Well, unless it's done improperly. Obviously, that could probably hurt something. You know, if, if uh, there's stress in the screws or anything like that. So I always say, you know, hey, do it. I always encourage to do it. Like, just like I said, because it can't hurt. But the other problem... Uh, especially with an existing rifle that doesn't shoot so great. You know, betting can help, but there's no way to guarantee it. It's one of those things you don't know until you try. And um, especially in a wood stock, you know, a pillar betting job, that's 300 bucks. So it's a little iffy, you know. It's like, well, I, I got to put this right up front. I cannot guarantee that it's going to improve or anything. So. But in this case, we're starting with a <laughs> brand new Defiance action, brand new Bartley and barrel, and in a cartridge that is a proven winner. So, in this case, obviously we're starting premium, and this part will perform the way it should. You've seen how I meticulously machine everything, and you know, don't uh, cut any corners or anything like that. Uh, in this case, you know, the bedding's just the the cream on top. You know, it's just a uh, just something that ensures that nothing's going to move in the system, shot to shot, consistency. So we can rule out anything in the stock, you know, if, if there's any accuracy issues. So the only thing left is, just, is basically tuning the load, <clears throat> tuning the load for uh, the uh, harmonics of this system. You know, bullet seating, charge weights, even primers. Um, you know, everything consistent in the cases, so it's kind of in the customer's hands after this. So I'll basically do everything I can to make sure the system is as good as it can be. And then it's obviously up to the shooter. I can't control what they're shooting out of it. I can't control the, the, their discipline, uh, <clears throat> you know, what they're doing. Now, in this case, Ken is a old-school bench rest guy. He's been doing this for a long time, so he knows what he's doing. The last rifle I built for him shot incredibly well. He's won a few matches with it and all that. So, you know, I, I expect no less from this one. So I know we can rule out the shooter in this case. So it's basically going to be all up to the load, you know. And he's a hand loader. So uh, I'm sure he'll work that out. Okay. So that's it for that for now. Like I said, I'll... I'll clean up. I'll, I'm sure I'll get some footage of the of the of the bedding getting cleaned up out of the stock and the milling machine. Uh, but as far as this portion goes, you probably won't see this again until there's laser engraving on it, and it's basically back in the stock where it should be. Oh, and two other things on the stock: there's the side bolt release that will have to be relieved here. 
in the stock. So this sits just below, well, I'll show you here. Get it in there. So right there. Uh, try to hold this one hand here. So right here, we'll have to be just relieved a little bit to allow that bolt release to work. And then the other kind of problem here is the ejection port <clears throat> on the stock does not line up with the ejection port on the receiver here. So this will also be cut out. You know, I don't think it'll really hurt anything to leave it in there. It's just a visual thing. It's driving me nuts looking at it. The problem is getting it colored back, so I'm gonna to have to basically black out like all this. I think we'll just cut this, skim off the paint, and then just black this. Black out the entire thing, rather than having this red or whatever color this is, and then that being black, that's gonna look weird. So I'll figure that out. <clears throat> but that's the other thing we gotta do with the stock. Okay. So I think that's all there is to say about this portion of the of the build. So we'll we'll be back with uh like I said, the next step will be the milling machine getting this stock cut out properly. Okay. Stock is cleaned up and all ready to go. 
Free bedded. Uh, you saw most of this previously, but just to kind of go over a few things. Um, I drill out the action screw holes after it's bedded so that there's no interference. So essentially we don't have a double thread going on from the bottom metal threaded through the bedding into the receiver. That's no good. You don't want that. You want the, the screw essentially uh, free floated. It really isn't the word, but you don't want it binding up against anything except for the receiver itself. So that's why there's just a little bit of chipping there as the drill. I drilled this way downwards just to uh, try to mitigate that as much as possible. But uh, it does inevitably chip just a little bit right there. So, you know, and same with the back, just a, just a tiny chip, uh, just to address that. And then right here is your uh, bolt release pivot pin. So that needs to be relieved. And then uh, I guess, um, or not I guess, but on the other side here is uh, one of your trigger pins where, the, where that sits. And then you'll see this nut here. That's kind of a custom job. Don't laugh too much at me. It's uh, only purpose is to hold the bottom trigger, trigger guard on. So if that nut wasn't in there, this hole would be empty and the trigger guard would be only held in by the rear action screw. The reason for that is a lot of Remingtons, especially the ADL style, have an actual threaded hole on the bottom for this third screw. It, it essentially just holds the trigger guard on, as you see here. Well, the Defiance doesn't have that, and I'm not about to go and drill a tap in the bottom of the Defiance action. Uh, I just feel like that's a little bit crazy. So, so what we're going to do, or what we did, is just uh, found a nut that fits the screw, and then a couple washers to kind of hold it so that it binds right there and holds the trigger guard on uh, tight, at least the front side. Uh, this in no way affects anything. If you look really close, you can see it. And then the relieving of this for the ejection port and the uh, bolt release. I was actually talking to the customer and I sent him some pictures and asked him, you know, do you want me to paint this black or just leave it? And he wants me to leave it. It's uh, molded in through there, so it actually matches the color. I think that does look a little nicer than just like black paint right there. I don't know. He can he can always paint it later if he wants to. But anyway, that's what that's for. So everything's ready uh, on the stock. So we're just going to put everything back together, do a final presentation of the rifle as it sits now, and get it ready for uh, delivery back to the customer. Is that a thing of beauty or what? Bartlian M24 Contour, one and eight twist, chambered in six five two eighty four Norma. Got our Defiance Deviant. The stock nicely relieved for the new ejection port. Uh, the bolt handle fit fine. There was nothing obstructing that at all. Uh, the original stock, the guy says it's McMillan. Very nice laser engraving there. And then uh, come around to the other side. So there's the whole package, 27 inch barrel, Night Force competition scope. And there's what I'm super proud of seeing. Man, it's been a long road, but finally got our own logo on a barrel. That is just, no words can describe no words can describe the feeling of satisfaction and uh, just just pride. I'm just it's been a long road. We've come a long, long way, and there it is. So first of many, 
precision rifles to leave this shop. This never gets old. I've done hundreds of these custom rifles and it just, it's never gets old. The feeling is satisfaction when it's completed, but it's something, just something about having your own name on, on things like that is just, just great. It's just great. Okay, so there's the bolt release where the stock was modified for it and it works just fine. <laughs> Oops, that was the bolt. I was gonna say, oh my God. And now it swings. Swings freely and uh, closes fine. Just the bolt will still come out. And then the crown, 11 degree crown. There at the at the muzzle. So this concludes another rifle building video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Wait times aren't crazy right now. I'm still a relatively new business, and the word's getting out there. I've got plenty of work in the shop lined up. So if you're interested in this kind of service. Do not hesitate to get in touch. I don't know when this video will premiere, but uh, as of filming this, it is now late February, 2024. So good time to get, uh, get your uh, components into me if you're uh, looking for a rifle, a precision rifle done by a precision rifle smith. Right, so uh, now's the time, guys. It's, uh, it's only going to get busier and lead times are going to get longer. <clears throat> so please do not hesitate. At the end of this video, you will see our website address. You should see some contact information at the bottom of the, in the description box. As well as uh, you can just like leave a comment or direct message me on, on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook. Um, please uh, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. That really helps. I appreciate everyone, every one of you. We're up to about 50 subscribers right now, 51, I think, last I checked, and over a thousand views. Um, so things are progressing, progressing nicely. But it's really gonna, it's gonna take you guys to help. You know, spread the word, share the videos. Um, if you got uh, friends that are into precision rifles, please, please let them know. I'm, like I said, I'm, I love working. I love having work. Uh, I just really enjoy doing this, so, uh, you know, now's the time. So anyway, without further blabbering on and on and on about this, uh, thank you again very, very much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions, and all that good stuff. So this is Jeff with Accurate Rifles and Restoration signing out. We'll see you on the next one.